Hello my lovelies, it's Casey. Today we are going to do something fun. We are going to do another uh, picture with just everyday art supplies. These are things around your house, around your office. Uh, you don't need to have any markers, paints, none of that stuff. So we are going to do a confetti tree today. And what the confetti is made of is just random papers. Um, I've got a post-it note. This is the inside of a security envelope. Um, I just cut the envelope apart. And these have different patterns on the inside if you take a look at them. Um, some of these, you know, you can just buy these at the store or you can get them through the mail when people send you things in a security envelope. Just cut the envelope open. So those have some fun patterns and colors. I have some tissue paper. Um, you can use wrapping paper. And then I've got pages from catalogs. Um, this is a Halloween one. This one is a um, gardening catalog. So I just took pages out that kind of had colors that I was interested in. This had a lot of greens. This one had blacks and a lot of darks, which I wanted for shadows. And so I took my papers and I sat and I tore up a whole bunch of little teeny confetti pieces. I am not gonna lie, this is a tedious process, but it's great if you're listening to a podcast or you're watching TV, you just sit there and tear up strips of paper. It's not too bad. Not something I would do when you have nothing better to do, but um, I did keep them sorted by piles so that I can separate them by color. Because um, we don't really want a mixture of everything in there because it's not going to have enough interest. It's going to look like just a jumbled mess. You want to be strategic in where you put your colors in different values. So I've got a piece of just regular printer paper. Um, you can use the back of any piece of scrap paper if you are in a pinch. It really doesn't make any difference. Just any regular sheet of paper will do. I took my ruler and I measured a half inch on all sides and I did a square here, or a rectangle, I guess it's a rectangle. Know your shapes, Casey. Um, I made a rectangle around the outside just for a border. I do like to do borders when I'm doing stuff on a piece of paper rather than in a journal. It just kind of contains the picture and gives the eye a signal that this is where the picture ends. There are, of course, pictures that I do where I want it to kind of go off the page and it seems like the art is just spreading out. This is not really one of those pictures. So I'm going to take my Sharpie marker and I probably should get another piece of paper to put behind here because Sharpie does bleed through and I don't really want to clean my desk because I'm lazy that way. I'm just going to trace my pencil line, and it doesn't have to be perfect whatsoever. If it ends up being perfect, yay, but uh, see, it already is not perfect. That's fine. I'll just kind of do that on the other side too, and then, then it'll look a little bit more purposeful. But it doesn't matter. Art really is not about being perfect at all. It's just about having fun and getting something in your head out into the world, which is really neat, you know? It's almost like a birthing process where you have something inside you and it needs to come out and so you do the work and then there it is, you brought forth this wonderful, fantastic thing. fabulous creation that wasn't here before. Alright, that's pretty good. So I've got my frame and we may or may not embellish that a little bit later. That's not really the bulk of the picture so we're not going to spend time on that at the moment. So now we're going to do our tree. 
and you don't want to do a tree straight in the middle because that's not all that interesting to look at. Having things right in the middle, if it's done purposefully, it can really have a big impact, but putting things off to one side or the other, um, or up or down, uh, makes it more visually interesting. It's kind of a rule of thirds, where you divide your paper into thirds, this way, this way, and you don't really want to have your focal point exactly in the middle. Um, if you have it, you know, any other, any other square, it's a lot more interesting to look at. Why this is, I don't know. That's just the way the rules are for art. Rules, you know. Things that people have discovered that make it more interesting, I guess. Not, not hard and fast rules. So we are going to start with some roots. And we'll bring our tree trunk up about here. And stick a branch on this side. Okay. I'll do some more roots. And I'm just using a Sharpie gel pen. You can use a ballpoint pen. You can use a pencil. I recommend a pen rather than a pencil. Because pencils smear and they're not very dark. And if you want something a little more permanent, pen is the way to go. So I think we'll have our tree about this wide. And just adding roots. And we don't want them to be even because, again, that's not real interesting to look at. Nothing in nature is even. Okay, we've got some good roots here. And now we'll bring our tree up and put our branches this way. Branches are not as important because we're putting the leaves over top. But we do need something because this, this part of the tree trunk is going to be very visible. So we want that to look good. have all kinds of things branching off here. And of course, real trees have their branches, you know, overlapping each other. But we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on branches. So there, I think that's pretty good. Okay, now we're going to add some interest to the trunk. And I want to kind of do something fantastical because this is a confetti tree and it's got all kinds of wild colors in it. I mean, not terribly wild colors. They're still within the general color palette of trees. I do want to make the tree more whimsical, so we are going to do some just crazy little... Um, swirly things here. And I don't really have any rhyme or reason to this. I just want something fun and interesting. I really like things that resemble what you see in nature, but aren't exactly what you'd see. Kind of as if you entered into an alternate universe and things are just a little more whimsical. Just a little bit fun and unexpected.
Alright, so we've got all of our lines done. Now we are going to shade in some of these spaces. And we'll do some of them darker than others. And I think I'm going to end up doing a, probably a crosshatch with some of this. Um, we'll just start with one at random and fill it in. And this one will be solid. I want to have some variation with this and not just black and white because it'll look a little too much like a zebra. So we'll do some of them darker than others. <clears throat> okay, so we've got this one dark. And then we'll do the one next to it a little lighter. So we're going to do kind of a crosshatch, which is lines that go one way and then they cross the other way. So there, that's some difference. And we'll leave some of these white, of course. And this will give us a gradient effect, so we have some that are dark and some that are light and some that are in between. There we go. That's pretty cool looking, right? Much better than a boring old tree. Okay. So now, the fun part with the confetti. I've got my handy dandy glue. Handy dandy, wow, handy dandy notebook. Holy cow. That was a total flashback. I don't know where on earth that came from. Okay. So we are going to put down glue, and I'm putting a lot of glue because the thing with confetti is not all of it will stick because there are so many pieces. So I'm just putting kind of little pockets here and there, not covering too much. And we'll just go with the first half of the tree here. Okay. So, I'm going to start with the darkest colors. And those will be kind of the shadows. Get in there. Uh, get off. Okay, there we go. I want to keep them in little sections together. And not go beyond the edge of the border. Okay, good. And then I'll go with the blue. And 
and already I'm covering up most of the glue, but that's fine because when I do the lighter colors, we're going to put more glue over top of this dark. Yeah. This is not going to stay this dark. These are the, the under layers, as it were. One dark one in the corner. Okay. Oop. Give me your blue. There. So you can see some of these are not really in the glue where they need to be, so they're not sticking, which is why you kind of have to push everything down a little bit. Because then you can see what's sitting on top of other papers and not actually sticking. But of course it is a mess. Okay. It's sticking to me, that's for sure. Okay. So now we'll put more glue over the top where we want the light parts. I'm trying not to touch the papers that are already there because they will stick to the bottle. Okay, that's pretty good. So now I'll do some greens. I probably could have made these smaller, but by the time I got to this color, I was so sick of tearing up paper. Plus, having different sizes adds interest, so it's all good. Except for when it doesn't stick. But art takes finesse and finagling. that one over there. So I'm going to pick it up and, all right, pretty good. They're actually all glued down, more or less. Some more, some less. All right. So I'm going to let this dry a little before I really put the highlights in. So we'll do the darks over on this side.
Okay, I'm thinking it's a little bit unbalanced and we need some more over here. Just a little. Okay, that's much better. Look at how amazing this looks already. It's just so cool. All right, now we're gonna do some highlights. Um, we want kind of the places where the sun hits. So we've already got quite a few lights in here. We don't wanna have too many places. Just a few where the light's going to hit. Start with the yellow. Of course, you can use whatever colors you want. You know, you don't have to stick with colors that are within the range of trees. I mean, you can make them pink or red or you know, whatever colors you want. That's the cool thing about art is you can make anything you want. It doesn't have to be realistic at all. You can make it as fantastical as you want to. And the cool thing is, if I taught a workshop on doing this, and I had, you know, 25 people taking this workshop, making the same tree, every single one of those trees would look different. Even if everybody used the same papers, had the exact same materials, all of those trees would look different. And that's because, I mean, all of us are different and art is really a reflection of who we are on the inside. So art's a really good way to express your individuality, find out who you are, what your style is, what you like, what looks beautiful to you. And really you can learn a lot about people just by learning what kind of art they like, what kind of art they make. It's kind of a window into the soul. Which is very cool. I kind of think that's a really neat way to get to know a person. Like on a first date or something, take them to an art museum and see what kind of art they like. It'll tell you a lot about who they are. And you can learn a lot about yourself too if you ask yourself why you like the art that you like. What specifically do you like about it? Does it remind you of something from your childhood or someone that you are close to? What kind of emotions come up for you when you look at art that you really love? Okay, I think I added more yellow than what I really wanted to. But, it, I mean, this is glue, 
So we'll just take some of it back. Because I really liked seeing the green. I kind of lost some of that green. The yellow is pretty overpowering, so we will just walk it back a little. This is okay. I do want some more green in here. So I'm really liking this color. Get off. So I gotta keep it in the lines. I mean, don't have to keep it in the lines, but I drew the lines because I wanted to keep the picture within the lines, so there we go. I feel like that's better. Now let's see what we can do with some of this um, security envelope. I'm not sure how this is gonna look. But you know, art's a big experiment. Oh, well, you know what? I kind of like that because it's black and white and it really reflects the tree trunk. Oh, my fingers are so full of glue. Can't get the paper to come off. Okay, do I like that? Hmm, I'm not sure that I do a little bit is okay it does add some depth to it but I don't like a whole lot of it for sure Okay, I think we've covered up the branches a little too much. I'm going to try to slide some of these apart a little bit, particularly over here. So we kind of lost our clumps and they kind of just all fell into one big clump. There we go, now we see that branch. branch. Okay. So this stage is really just playing around with it until you like how the leaves look. underneath here. So we can slide some of these under a little bit. And maybe a blue. Because we lost some of our darks. We actually lost a lot of the darks on this side. in here because these got all covered up. Okay. I think I like that. Alright girls. 
stuck on there. Boy, that's really heavy. There's a lot of glue on here. So of course this is going to take quite a long while to dry. Once it's dry, you can water down the glue and use a brush or you can use Mod Podge if you want and go over the top and make sure everything is really going to stick. Because once it's dry, sometimes you'll see pieces that are sticking up or about to fall off. Or you could just, you know, glue them down a little more. Um, with Mod Podge, you have to be aware. Some Mod Podge is shiny. I have a matte Mod Podge. But I do have different kinds of papers. Um, the ones from the catalogs are a little bit shiny. And so, you know, to put matte over top of that would dull some of that shine if... You know, you want to keep the shine, you don't want to do that, so, you know, just gluing down extra pieces would probably be better if you wanted to keep the different um, glossiness, I guess. Not really sure what the word is that I want there. Alright, so we've got our tree, and I'm going to put a little something in here. Take my. I think I want to use the yellow. Yeah, I think so. I'm going to draw this first. We're going to, I'm going to put a little heart in here. Just because I could use some love today. Don't know about you. And I like to draw my hearts first. I don't ever draw them perfectly. I don't ever cut them out perfectly. That's fine, because A, nobody's perfect. B, I don't think anybody's heart is ever perfect, you know. We all have our little heartbreaks. And this is interesting, because only on one side do I have some ink, but I like it that way. I'm just going to, yeah, yeah. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Okay. So now, oh, sticky post-it. I'll just glue that in here. like that quite a bit. And the thing is, okay, it is hard to see the edges that don't have the ink on it. So I'm just going to draw a little bit, little kind of sketchy lines, real, real, real lightly. I wanted to say gently and that was not the correct word. Little sketchy, little sketchy lines. Okay, that's better. Now you can really see it, but it still has the shadow or what have you. There. I like that. And I'm going to just kind of embellish this a little bit. And we're going to have it hanging around the tree. It's done. 
I like the frame around the edge and I, I don't think I want to do anything further with that because it would draw attention away from the tree and I think the tree is dynamic enough as it is. So all I have to do is wait for it to dry and it's ready to frame. I hope you had a good time. I enjoyed this very much and I will see you in the next video. Bye!